my uncle Nicholas made two really nice drawings of our chapel in the village and painting of a stag. When I was really little, I always knew that there was a certain talent around in the family. It might be explored a little. The opportunity came when I was collecting butterflies and when I made copies of my favorite ones, I saw that I could do it. The interesting thing is that at the same time I made horrible things in our art class. <laughs> when I started to study, I had a series of journeys, first to Greece and Turkey and in the British Museum. I saw oracle bones and they stuck and there was an incubation time for about 10 years. I got interested in those picture writing. Yeah, and one year later I went to Yemen and Egypt. Those journeys triggered the interest for oriental languages. When I was in Hamburg, I found a Chinese bookstore and then it came all back to me and I started to study those ancient Chinese signs and all sorts of other writing systems. I was hoping that they would somehow creep into my art, <laughs> which they did. And one of my favorite things in art is very light drawings and sketches of first ideas. And then I take it from there by cutting out wooden pieces or developing first ideas further in painting. I really envy the Japanese and the Chinese for their possibility to paint and write at the same time so that the two things fall together in one place. Uh, we have it in our cultural uh, environment, in emblemata, uh, very strong images. But in China, they had a way to condense those signs and have very economic formulations, which are even more powerful than our logos and pictographs and pictograms. And the power is really how few signs you can create those images. That's very dear to my heart, this possibility to have the greatest possible economic way of telling things. I conducted a project where I was bringing together unaccompanied refugee kids and the way to bring those two completely different people together was via mail art. Refugees had for the first time in Germany a really hard time and a lot of uh, refugee houses were attacked. So projects like that in around in plenty, but they were unfortunately really rare. That was my start to do social projects. I invented a language game and after that I got a job to coordinate uh, international projects as well. So my art life was divided in a very practical way. I used art to develop useful ideas as well for the world. I do kind of pyjama origami <laughs> sometimes, always when I get the chance and I can't explain it, you have to see it. Yeah, I'm dreaming to do many things at the same time. Especially, above everything, I want my things to be useful as well. And I'm a little bit split into a constructive part, doing a real job. But on the other hand, I do very ivory-towery art. 
but um, for me it's not contradictory. <laughs> I think those two realms belong together if you are an artist. But I prefer the constructive dreamer in me, so that there are real results at the end as well.